Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about hooks in Harlow 3. Harlow has a concept called a hook. Put simply, it is the content affected by a macro. A hook is a content section enclosed by opening it and closing square brackets. The concept is used by many macros in Harlow, and we see an example right here. This is a different font. Some macros act on named hooks, and we see two examples here. The first, if I click this, we see the click replace macro acted on a named hook, and the mouse over replace macro acted on the named hook. Two examples here of using named hook, and we'll look at the code here in a moment. So hooks are areas affected by macros. They are either attached to a macro directly or can have names depending on the macro usage. And let's look at the code. So we see the first example we ran into within this story, right here in this passage using hooks. We see the, hot, the line I've highlighted right here using the font macro. The font macro allows us to change, change some selection of text to a different font that we then name. In this case, we're changing it to Helvetica, but the section it affects, the content area it has influence on, is within opening and closing square brackets, and is attached directly to this macro. So, by using this macro, we affect this content right here, this selection, enclosed by opening and closing square brackets, as I just explained. So we see here we use macros in Harlow and what they affect are hooks. Named hooks are a little different. Depending on the macro usage, they may actually affect a named hook instead of the hook being directly after or attached to a macro. In these cases, they use something called a name tag. We see right here, this is an example of a name tag following after a hook. We have a hook with opening and closing square brackets around it, then we have a name tag that gives it a name. Where right here we see the name tag before the hook, and we have a hook and opening and closing square brackets. So the name tag can come after and it points towards, or before and it points towards. In both cases, the name tags point towards the hooks in which they give over, give over a name. Once these hooks have names, they can be affected by certain macros that use those techniques. In this case, click replace and mouse over replace both use named hooks. We see here a question mark, meaning we're looking for this named tag right here for this name for this hook. Same with this one, this name tag for this name for this hook. And we see two of these, click replace and mouse over replace, are just two examples we use in Harlow when we want to work on named hooks. So let's review all of this again. Hooks are the areas affected by macros. Put very simply, it shows up in most of the macros within Harlow. If we want to affect something, some text area or content area, we're going to be using hooks to do that. We can give hooks names, and depending on our macro usage, they can be affected once we give them a name tag. The two examples we saw within this story were click replace and mouse or replace. In both cases, once they had names, those hooks could then be affected by those macros. So depending on the usage, and consult the documentation of course to see how these are constructed, we either can use hooks as part of macro usage, or we can see hooks by themselves with names that are affected by macros. In both cases though, we're using hooks that are affected by macros, and that's how we do things in Harlow. Thanks for watching.